All right, I want to walk through a quick example that a user just sent in. She had a question about the perspective floor and uh, wall effect. This is what she's working with, and overall it looks pretty good, right? Uh, she wants to use a little lighter color wall, which this cream texture actually seems to work real well. This would be the baseboard because this is the floor part that uh, she was getting a little stuck on. This actually looks really great as a wall setup, right? So we have the wall, and then we have this more of a chair rail right here, then we do a baseboard, and then the wall background. So if I dragged, say, a piece of clip art in right here, I couldn't keep the clip art off of, I couldn't keep all the clip art on the slide level, right where the floor would be. It makes it look like, based on the way this wall looks, it looks like she's off the ground. But she does work well if I move her below so that this whole wall becomes the backdrop and the floor is a little bit below the slide level. But what we want, it to, what we want to, to do is actually create this floor so that we can set that clip art on top of this floor so we actually look like we're at the floor level. And that's pretty simple to do. It's just a simple correction uh, for this file. So let me just double click it and open up the Shape Styles window. I'm going to turn off a few settings that are right now. There's a shadow on this down here. I'll turn that off. And I'll make sure there aren't any bevels. We don't need that for this effect. So the next thing I want to do is actually just work with the 3D rotation. Now the 3D rotation by default gives me access to the X, Y, and Z um, rotation. Well, I don't really necessarily want to work with those as they are right now. What I want to do is actually create initially a perspective effect. Now to get the perspective effect open, right, you can see that it's grayed out. Just need to click the perspective. Um, any of these perspective settings will, be, will, be, will work fine. I'm just going to click the first one. And so right off, nothing looks like it really changed, right? But we now have access to this perspective, and you can see 45 degrees is set up. If I start to work with these zero values, and this is really the best way to get a feel for how each of these uh, fields work, look at that. Go up, it goes up, it goes down. But notice how when I go up, this grain is starting to go off in the distance a little bit. But this shadow right here is kind of confusing. So let's disable that. Go to 3D format, and you can see right here for the depth, just select that and put that to zero, and let's make sure there aren't any bevels being applied. Okay. So let's return back here to 3D rotation, and I can continue inc uh, increasing this value, and we're sort of getting that effect that we're after, right? So it looks like it's going off into the distance. So maybe 70 or 80, uh, 70 for now, we'll try it. Leave that at 45 perspective, click close. Now the only thing I have to do at this point is make this a lot larger, right? Because when we put this off in the perspective, it actually got a lot thinner. So I'm just going to drag it out and reposition. Okay, not bad. I will make sure I right click and send this to the back just in case it's uh, below, I mean, uh, to make sure that it's below this floorboard. And if I zoom in, it's not looking too bad at this point. I can drag this piece of clip art in and now I can set it her on top of that and it looks like she's on the floor and that's against the backdrop. So that's pretty great at this point, kind of what we're after. Let's preview it real quick and see how it looks in our actual course player. All right, looks pretty good. You can see how the direction of the, uh, the wood grain can actually affect how this effect looks too, right? So we probably want to center this a little bit more, but that's essentially uh, the idea. So I could move this over a little bit just to ensure that it's um, centered up a little bit with that horizon point. Now the other thing to note that is sometimes, depending on how, how large you scale this object up, it may not display when you render it. Even if it does display like it just did for us there, I would still save this out as a picture just to reduce, because this is a large vector object. There's no reason to have a vector object this large on your slide. So I would right click and I would do, right, I just save it out as a picture save it as a PNG file, delete this shape, or save this shape as sort of a uh, artboard, save it as a working source file, but then bring that PNG file in and make that your image um, that you use. It'll actually publish a lot faster, it'll render a lot more predictably, and uh, won't take up as uh, much time to publish it. Essentially that's the effect. Then you can start working with things like shadows, drop shadows on this one, maybe a slight gradient shadow, maybe even making this top one a little bit darker for a little bit more contrast, or even swapping them out with some uh, a different types of graphics. But, Pretty cool effect, and now we can bring people in here and put them on the floor and kind of create that little scene that uh, they're all working and we're kind of just watching them from a, a distance. So hope that helped, but really just the key is to remember to work with the format picture and the 3D rotation. Set a basic rotation, get it set to perspective 45, and then work on your X rotation.